Signal three at 326 Cherokee Station Circle, 326 Cherokee Station Circle, okay, three. Done zero residence is at 10 4 I'm Sergeant DC's. I've uh, been law enforcement officer for 31 years. I think I was chosen to to engage in this conversation because of how long I've been a law enforcement officer and because it's spanned over two different states and multiple decades. Uh, so in that time, I've gotten to see a lot of different things and you know, didn't really think about how any of those things affected me except or maybe until towards the end of my career. And when I started in law enforcement, I got a unique opportunity to work in, in undercover operations in narcotics. I was very excited to do it. I mean, it was, it was very gun ho doing a lot of exciting things, dangerous things. At least I was told it was dangerous. I never felt like it was dangerous at the time because you don't think about those things. Um, I think about them now and, and they're, they, they're, they scare me now. I'm remembering more now, okay, both in my previous agency and here, where I have subordinate young people and I'm watching through them what I must have been, you know, seeing or thinking. And, and that's kind of been giving me more of a re reflection. Um, seeing young people see a dead person for the first time, especially an innocent person, a, a child. Uh, whether it was a result of a crime or was a result of carelessness, you know, car accidents, a kid getting hit you know, on a bicycle. And watching those officers see that for the first time, looking at their face, it kind of gives me a flash, oh, that was me. That was me, I was 20 years old looking at that. You know? And um, I almost feel sorry for them. Uh, so perhaps I'm more be a fatherly figure or uh, maybe more pushy about, you know, trying to get that uh, information out of them, like you know, what, what, what's going on. Uh, but I also found, surprisingly, because I wasn't like that, that they are coming to me and asking uh, questions like, you know, yeah, that person was dead. Yeah, that person was dead. I've never seen a dead person before, you know, and then they're going through that process. And it's just amazing to me because I, I didn't have that in the very beginning. Uh, and it's not something you can go home and tell your wife about. One, one incident uh, this involved the death of uh, somebody died in a, in a traumatic uh, event and a lot of the officers were trying desperately to perform CPR to perform life-saving and and I, I knew I'd seen enough dead bodies I didn't did seen enough people uh, laying there in that same in that same position looking in that same way that I knew that that person was beyond resuscitation but what affected me was watching these officers so desperately not, they were so focused on, on continuously trying and I didn't want to be the person to tell them, well, it's, it's over. I, and I knew to myself, I think this is gonna affect them after they're not, they don't need, they're gonna think back, wow, I was doing all that, that person was long gone. Cause they're gonna know eventually just how futile it was at the time. And I remember several officers were, uh, they were disturbed, rightfully so, about, about the event. But you can't, the type of questions that you, that you get, um, you have to pick up on, on them uh, because they're disguised oftentimes. Uh, many times like, how are you doing? They're concerned about how you're doing. I'm doing fine. You know, but um, what they're telling you is I'm not doing good. Um, and for the first time, I had a, an officer tell me, you know, and this was this really uh, affected me. I, when I'm getting ready for work, I think that I'm going to go to work and I'm going to die.
couple that with what I mentioned earlier, that nobody wants to be the guy that can't do anything. You got guys here that, in every law enforcement agency, every law enforcement agency across the country that uh, will not say no to a Hey, can you help us cover this? Come in early, leave late. You get officers sometimes that are working 20 hours straight. If you're a detective, you can be on a, Kate, on, a, on a call for 30 or 40 hours straight. But you got officers covering shifts and, and also trying to make ends meet because in the midst of all this, we got family and we're trying to take care of, care of our own families. But then many times you're working overnight and then you're in training the next day and you work, you're, you're training the next day. Uh, I met, remember many, many times talking to somebody that says, oh, you, you're working today too? Uh, no, I haven't gone home yet. You know, I'll be getting a cup of coffee somewhere they're like, I haven't gone home yet. When you saw me yesterday, I was at work and I have not left work. And so it's, it's difficult to, to kind of wrap yourself around that. And then what happens, and I've seen it happen, I've seen it happen in my old agency, I've seen it happen here. You know, the officer's on his way home and falls asleep at the wheel and crashes. And guess what? Other officers are gonna come and work that wreck and hold you accountable to that. And you're gonna pay the price for that as well. And most people don't want to see what it is that we see. They don't. A lot of the officers discover that they don't want to see what we see. And we lose a lot of officers that way. They don't want to see what we see and they don't want to do what we do. They don't want to. 